yet. Okay. Perfect. And you can see the screen, okay? Yep. All right. Nice. So, um, first off, thanks for having me here. I'm excited to really showcase the uh, Jet product line. I know really the uh, three things we're going to be covering are on the first slide here. It's reporting, budgeting, and analytics. And I do want to get into a demo really as soon as I can. I want to make sure we have time to cover everything. Um, and so for those of you who are not familiar with Jet, I'm going to start with a couple high-level slides. If you are interested in any of the products that I showed today, work with the 360 team. They have a lot of Jet knowledge. And if you're wanting a more specific demo around any of the products that I show today, we're more than happy to get together with you and dive into more detail on the value it could bring your company, okay? So with that, I'm gonna get started, unless there's anything else, Barb, that you wanted to say. No, I think uh, good to go. Okay, awesome. So uh, Jet is a, a company that's been around since 2002. Uh, we're all over the world and we're a Microsoft partner. And the reason I even show this marketing slide, so I know, you know, the amount of customers we have and users we have is important to us as a company. But for you, you're making an investment into the Microsoft technologies. And I just want you to know we have a strong background with uh, Microsoft and we have a very tight integration to their products, as you'll see today. And we're well positioned for the future. And so for those of you who are um, looking at Business Central uh, and maybe even are potentially on GP today, it is compatible with both. It is a product that, again, is well positioned and designed for the future to meet all of your needs as you grow as an organization. Um, we do service a myriad of different industries. The core thing that JET solves is instead of manually exporting information and then manipulating it within Excel to create a refreshable report that you can use indefinitely, we have hooks and links back into your database that are created using an interface that's built for the average person in finance or accounting. And so what that allows you to do is eliminate some not all, but some of the friction between IT and finance when you're wanting to access information. And so that's what all of these companies have in common is they wanted faster, simpler reporting and really to move from spending so much time on actually getting their data in a format that is uh, easily read and digested and spend more time analyzing the information and making decisions based off that information. So Jet Reports is where we'll start. It is a add-in to Excel, and it does have the ability to read all of the information in your system, whatever system you're on today from Microsoft. And so what that means is you not only will you get financial reporting, but you also have access to the subledger. There's drill downs. There's ways to create hierarchies. There's a lot of flexibility in the design of the report. But the intent is once it's done, maybe you've built a graph into this report or you uh, want to have a package for month end closing that you just hit a button and it actually deploys and executes. That is a reality with Jet is once you have the report built, maybe some slight modifications to the date or what company you're analyzing, and then you're able to refresh and use that report indefinitely. Jet budgets is, I don't want you to think is, this is, um, you don't necessarily need this to read your budget information, to be clear. Um, Jet Reports does that natively. What our budget add-on tool does is it actually assists with the process around budgeting. And so instead of having to manually manage spreadsheets or have kind of disparate files across different systems and reconciling them all at the end of your budget period, what it allows you to do is to create templates and workflows around the budget process so that you can easily send these 
sections or uh, departmental budgets out to people who can fill out, upload into a web portal, and then everything is stored in its own database so that when you go to maybe reforecast uh, halfway through the year for next year, it's very easy to copy and use that information uh, from there on out. So similar concept to uh, the reporting tool, it's just really based around workflow and collaboration. Um, the Jet Hub is really the glue that holds those two pieces together, as well as a dashboarding feature available in Jet Analytics. What it allows you to do is upload reports, dashboards, and budgets into a web-based platform that's compatible with any device that connects to the internet. And so instead of necessarily sending out reports, uh, what you can do is load them into a hub, uh, allow users to log in, they get a personal view of reports that only they have access to, and then they can both run, download reports, they can view dashboards, or work on budgets from the web-based interface. Um, I'm only going to touch on this at a high level, but the one thing that Jet Analytics brings to the table above and beyond reporting is instead of connecting to one database at a time, it has the ability to connect to multiple databases. It does come with a pre-built data warehouse and cube set that you then can use that data warehouse or cube to view the information in a simpler, easier to digest format for any average business person in any of the options you see on the far right hand side at the bottom. Uh, could be Excel, could be Power BI, could, our, could be our dashboard builder, but it's really designed to make reporting faster, easier, simpler, and give you the ability to connect to multiple data sets at the same time. So I'm actually going to hop out of this um, presentation. I'm going to get right into JET reports. And so what the reporting tool does is we take advantage of what Excel does well. And so what Excel does well is it breaks information out into rows, columns, and conversely sheets. And so in this particular example, what we've done is we've grouped certain accounts together. Uh, we used a column replicator, meaning instead of copying and pasting this for each company, we just had it replicate out depending on how many companies were in the database. And then we even took it a step further and uh, we replicated each company out by sheet and then used a departmental code or a dimensional code uh, to break this out even further. So you can basically analyze this by uh, anything that brings relevance and context to your numbers. So whether it's department, location, entity, whatever it happens to be, it could even be projects. Um, that's really the intent is once it's built, it's in a format that makes sense. And then now as a viewer, which is one of the types of users in Jet, this is their experience. Um, the viewer can now run this report live, they can run it in the background, or they can drill into any of the numbers. The designer also has the ability to build in what are called report options, and so that allows the viewer to modify any of those options uh, within the report without having to resend this. So I could change the business group filter, I could change the date range, the currency in this particular case, and then you can just go ahead and run it. It'll go back to the database, pull it back in the format that you've already created. And then if the viewer wants to drill down, there's two different ways for them to do this. Uh, one is if you're connected to Business Central, it allows you to actually open up a transactional window directly into the system. So if a user has the ability to make modifications or changes within the system itself, uh, and they have permissions to the data, it will actually pull up an interactive window. The other option is called a grid view, which I'm actually going to show you. Um, and what this does is it pulls up a pivot table like interface where it allows you to view the uh, summary level detail of the transactions um, right within this window. And so when I right click up here at the top, it'll show all of the underlying, uh, underlying metadata associated with it. And you can choose what to include or not include, uh, as well as move any of these columns up into almost like a hierarchy format and then maybe sort it by amount. And then at that point, if it's there is a need to do additional analysis, you can even export this back to Excel.
Okay, and so this is really the viewer experience once the designers created the report. Um, and so I'm going to show you what their experience is like, or the experience is like as a designer next. And uh, up and through the through the end of the year, Jet does come with unlimited viewers. Um, and so what that means is if you are looking for an advanced reporting tool, um, we do offer that unlimited viewer license through the end of the year. Um, the designer portion, so this tool set is available for any of your named designers. And so what that allows them to do is to create reports in a myriad of different ways. Easily the most popular way to build a financial report, at least from the beginning, is called Fast Financials. And the reason for that is it's really simple. You just click a button, it reads all of your accounts, you can choose what to include. Um, I'll include the column headers here, but as you scroll down, I'm actually going to go down to where my revenue begins, which happens to be the 40,000s. I'm going to scroll all the way to the bottom. I'll simply hold shift and then we'll drag this into Excel and it'll do all the heavy lifting for me. So instead of me creating um, the actual report, it takes a picture of it, pulls it into Excel and creates all of the formulas that I need. So as you can see, very easy. Um, and again, nothing about Excel changes. So if I wanted to add colors or a graph, or if I wanted maybe conditional formatting <clears throat> on my uh, variance numbers, where revenue accounts show up green if they're positive and uh, vice versa for budgeting, but it's also built in um, a lot of the most commonly used filters. And so when again, I go ahead and run this, um, it has pulled back that information for me, and now it's up to me. Do I want to replicate this information maybe month over month? Do I want to replicate it by company month over month? Um, there's really no limitation to that, but this is primarily where a majority of our customers are starting to build the bones or the framework of a financial report. Um, the next financial example I want to show you is using something called the GL function. <clears throat> this is a um, very good way where if you have, let's say you've laid out a, f a format that you want the report to appear in initially, and instead of maybe just pulling all of the accounts, we want to do something like where we're creating a range or uh, a couple of accounts merged together. The GL function is very good at that. And so what it is, is it's just a set of questions. Um, what it does is it says, what do you want to see? And so we can pull in the balance, the budget, the credit, debits. I'm actually going to pull in the full balance. Um, you do have access to your chart of accounts here where you could do like a range, uh, maybe everything except certain accounts within a range. You can get very custom with that. Excuse me. In our case, uh, I'm actually just going to point to what I've already created because I'm native to Excel. Uh, I've actually built in a starting and ending date up here. And then in our case, uh, I have company at the top as well, and I'm actually going to lock that in. Um, you can choose to include or exclude closing transactions. We have a lot of customers who have uh, one column that includes all the closing and then the next one that that doesn't and so it allows you to reconcile those accounts pretty easily at the end of the month um, in our case that was pretty simple I'm actually going to drag this over it now points to the UK company I'll come into Excel I'll actually use the sum feature and I'll open this up a little bit but then I just drag this down um, and so if I changed what accounts it was pointing to or what company um, Jet will actually read those accounts or companies instead of these uh, sample companies here. So at a high level, this is really how uh, pretty much all of our customers are building financial reports is using the fast financials uh, or the GL function itself. Okay. So I mentioned earlier that Jet can read all of your information. 
uh, within a given system. And so this is an example of one of the sample reports we have around revenue, which is uh, basically includes a graph, shows all of my customers, the percent of their total sales, and then we've used Excel to do some of those variance calculations. When I run this report, some of these options pop up uh, where I can say maybe our top 10 customers instead of our top five. But because all of the links are hooked into Excel natively, the graph updates, all the calculations update, everything holds true um, right within the report itself. Okay. Um, and so for those of you curious about kind of what sample reports we have, if you go to our website under resources, there's a sample report section. There are 266 different examples of reports that we've done over the years. And depending on what system you're on, you're going to get a package of pre-built reports, uh, budgets or uh, budget templates and or dashboards. And so it's a really great place to go view some of these reports and download them uh, if you're curious about what else it is that we have out of the box. Um, and so that's really kind of at a high level, the, the difference between um, the ad hoc reporting and the um, financial reporting for the viewer is that it's really <laughs> just the same, uh, but you can build in some advanced metrics and graphs to make it easier for them. Um, if you're wanting to distribute this report, you can actually use the automated scheduler here or you can upload it into the web. The scheduler itself is natively built into Excel. And when I actually open this up, it allows me to choose how often I want this report to be ran, uh, what format that I'd like it to be sent out in, uh, as well as who's actually going to receive this report or if I'm sending it to a shared network drive or uh, folder. <clears throat> so I could say every Monday, run this report before I get into the office, send it via email to a certain set of people, and then maybe I just give them a values only workbook. You could also do a web page or a PDF. Um, this is also where people group together reports. So if you have a month end package that uh, you don't want sent out until all the numbers are finalized, you can actually have that sitting here waiting to be distributed once you know everything is closed. Uh, the other way for distribution is the Jet Hub. Um, basically, what the Jet Hub allows us to do is upload this report into the web. And then when the user goes to log into the web portal with their username and password, <clears throat> uh, they're actually going to see a personalized view. And they could change this if they wanted to want it, maybe a tile format. Um, but you can group them together in folders. You can view any of these reports. You can run them right here in the web. Um, use any of the filters that you've built into Excel. So it's all still here. And then when the user goes to open this, they can open an Excel online if you have Excel online or download directly to their machine. Okay. <clears throat> so I'll show you what this looks like in Excel online. Oh, two-factor authentication is working. <laughs> Could be a pain in the ass, too. Oh, it looks like most of it's over here to the left. <clears throat> so this is just a trial balance directly out of GP. So nothing fancy, but that's the idea. Um, and then under, so when a viewer is in here, they see run and open. Uh, the one who owns the report can choose who to share it with. They can automate the distribution, rename it, or change who the actual owner of the report is. Under the details tab, you can actually see all of this in a different way. Uh, you can see who has actually access to this information, uh, how often the report has been ran or utilized, and it actually shows with a date and a timestamp. It stores a copy of this report, so you can actually go back and open up that older version of the report. 
Um, and then you can also have multiple iterations of the same report. So for example, uh, if we go back to the example of uh, month end closing, what you can do is you can actually come in here, upload your newest version of that report, and it'll actually disseminate to anyone who's under the sharing tab instead of manually sending those out. So a lot of flexibility with the Jet Hub. This is not an additional cost from Jet. Um, it's basically an optional feature that you can choose to install uh, if it seems like it will bring some value. Okay. Uh, under the app picker over here on the left, we see reports, which is what we're in right now. The scheduler also lives here, and then we have Jet Budgets and then the dashboard feature. So I'm actually going to hop into Jet Budgets. And so really, like I had alluded to, it's designed to assist with workflow and collaboration uh, across the organization. So you can see I have some reforecasts here. Um, you know, it's really just a matter of once you've created the template, you can keep and use it indefinitely. I'm actually going to open up this example and talk through the three ways that people are using Jet Budgets. Um, one is you can still use Excel for budgeting purposes, but if you don't want to manually manage a template for each department or location, you can create that template and then farm it out to each individual department. The other way is you can take those accounts that you're budgeting to and actually create very specific work items. Uh, any of the bold sections are roll-ups. Uh, any of the light gray sections are work that needs to be completed. Uh, conversely, you can also group everything together. So you can have multiple accounts all together in the same item and again sliced and diced by any of your segments or dimensions and then it's just a really a matter of am I filling this out or is someone else so in the work section here this is where we're really creating our um, our items really um, so if I add a section here and maybe I just call this uh, maybe this is from the EU sales for example um, when I right click on here, I can add a new work item. And so what this does is it says, are you entering the data yourself or are you going to assign this to another user? I could easily enter the data myself in Excel online. <clears throat> the reason that people are still using Excel is that the online feature of, uh, the Excel templates does not include all of the same formulas. Um, as Excel Online gets better, we'll continue to be compatible. But if you're wanting to build in KPIs or metrics or you want to do some uh, light forecasting or something around using some more advanced Excel formulas, this is where we would want to uh, enter the information into Excel locally. I'll just show you what it looks like if you do it online. <clears throat> and if you have templates, there's just a drop down here to to pull in a template. Um, but over here on the left, it's actually going to read all of your accounts. And so you can choose what accounts that you want included for budgeting purposes. And then you can filter it by any of the uh, dimensions or segments that you have in your chart of accounts. So if I wanted this to just be specific to the sales department, but I want it broken out by maybe each area, you can show that right here. And so you can continue to add to this for complexity or stack in the column. But once you're done and you hit finish, this is where you choose to enter online or in local Excel. I'll just show you online real quick. So uh, right here, we can say, you know, maybe it's 10,000. Uh, you can actually do some kind of light uh, Excel functionality like multiplication, division, things like that are still there. Um, and then as you're working on this particular item, the user can choose to save and submit it or save and come back and work on it later. Okay. And so in this case, I actually occupy the three different roles available in Jet Budget. So you have an owner, an approver, and a contributor. If we go to um, one of these other examples, you can see if I assign it to another user, I can actually have layers in between the budget process 
where we can include attachments, we can have a note section. Um, there's a lot there to assist with the workflow around that particular work item. Um, and then you can even enable reminders uh, for those who are working on the budget itself. So instead of manually saying, you know, I've set a deadline for a week from now or a month from now, um, you can actually have these automated to uh, remind people to, to work on that. If you do assign any of these work items to a, another user, um, so instead of me clicking, you know, enter the data myself, we just say, well, I'd like to include a couple of other users. They will actually receive any of the attachments, which could be a report, it could be a receipt, could be a PDF, could be any file. Uh, as well as the budget template and a link to actually click in and work on the budget, that's all automated. And so you don't have to manually send out this assignment once you've logged them as an approver or a contributor. <laughs> and then the owner has the final say. So as these items go back and forth in the queue, there's maybe an allocation uh, and you're going back and forth on why that's the right amount or why it's not. Uh, the owner doesn't necessarily have to be involved until the very end where the approver is submitting it for final submission. Once everything is approved, um, it will show up here basically as a um, finished budget, and now it's available to be reported on. And so at that point, um, you can choose to just leave your budgets here. So... A lot of the reasons people were actually uploading their budgets back to GP or back into Business Central was to report off of it. You don't necessarily have to do that if you have JET budgets. It will all be stored here, but conversely, you can actually use Excel um, to write it back into your database just by using a JET function and creating a template. So there's a lot of different options as far as reporting off of it. Um, but this is really, in a nutshell, the workflow and collaboration. I'm actually going to show you an example of what a template looks like in Excel. And so it's the same process in the work section. If I create a uh, work item and instead of saying enter it in Excel, I say I want to draw, or Excel online, I want to drop it into Excel. I'm going to show you a couple of real world examples from some of our first customers on the product. Um, basically, what they did is in this case, they wanted their sales organization to contribute to the budget. And, you know, just as well as I do, um, the salespeople have no idea what GL accounts matter um, in terms of for budgeting purposes. They just know what they know, whether it's a location, revenues, they have quotas or things that are driving the budget. So what we've done is we've dropped in the same section we had in Excel online over here, and we can actually just sell reference. Oops. <clears throat> we can uh, sell reference on a different tab, a specific number. We'll drag this over. And then this is the section that Jet Budgets will pick up on. And then over here on the right, the actual sales manager can update their quotas, they can change really anything within this template that they've used historically. And then as these numbers update, it flows back into this template, right? And so it makes it easier for them because they don't have to know what the account numbers are. And then it makes it easier for the controller or CFO because once they're done, they go to the jet ribbon, they click save and budget. This whole file gets uploaded and all of these numbers on the left-hand side are automatically uploaded into the portal for initial approval. And so it's a really flexible way to take advantage of either existing templates or more advanced uh, metrics that are actually flushing out your budget. This is a payroll example. And in this example, the user actually wanted to see all the way down to the individual employee level. Uh, to help drive the budgets and actually have a couple of what-if scenarios. And so these drivers are actually what are impacting the numbers. So if I update this driver and maybe I say, you know, what if it was a 25% raise? Um, there's a lot you can do there that's updating this. But again, the concept is the same. 
everything consolidates up here to the top. And then once the user is done, they would just click save and budget. Um, this is another example of a reforecast. The difference between this one, um, well, actually the payroll one had this too, but there's a hook into your actuals. So instead of having a template that is really just Excel, you can actually use JET to point to information in your system that helps for forecasting throughout the year. So instead of manually entering what the actuals are uh, or what the budget was last year, you can actually include links uh, back into the database to make it easier to create your budget. Okay, so in a nutshell, that's really what Jet Budgets is doing, is it's assisting with workflow and collaboration, uh, making it easier to have templates and refreshable um, work items, because once you're done, uh, you can actually copy this budget and choose um, what to include or not include in the next year. So that's Jet Budgets on the input side. The output side looks something like this. Uh, where basically we have our accounts, we're rolling actuals to budget, you have some projections and budgeted variances included. And so again, some of these reports are actually available on our website, but this is really what the output looks like is we choose what budget, we choose the date range, company. Uh, in our case, I have dimensions included, but uh, the same is true for account segments. Okay. Um, so next I'm going to move into Jet Analytics. And so uh, just kind of as a recap, um, we've covered Jet Reports and Jet Budget so far. We've explored the Jet Hub. Uh, the last piece of the Jet Hub is included in Jet Analytics, which is the dashboarding section. And so for those of you who are really looking for uh, trend analysis, uh, wanting to slice and dice large sets of information, uh, the dashboard interface here in the web is compatible uh, just as it is with reporting on any device that connects to the internet. Um, I guess once these decide to load up, I can show you what they look like. Um, but the idea is that you can actually get into these dashboards and slice and dice on the information. And so uh, it's very, very fast. It's very user friendly. We've built in some performance tiles here. We have some slicers. Uh, we can zoom into any of these visuals and slice and dice on this information as not as we want. And then basically swipe through the tiles and spot trends within the organization. Right? And so this is a feature again of Jet Analytics, but this is where the dashboards would live uh, from Jet, which is actually in our web portal. Um, so Jet Analytics is really taking uh, the complexity that sometimes we run into when we're wanting to manually create reports off of sometimes a single database, but more commonly multiple databases and actually simplifying it. So we're taking uh, complex tables and fields and we're actually organizing them by subject matter first. So you can have all of your finance, all of your inventory, uh, maybe all of your specific expenses or projects, however you're organized as, as um, a company, uh, we can actually organize that within the data warehouse. And then a lot of BI tools actually stop right here, um, which is fine. There's nothing wrong necessarily inherently with that, but the fastest, easiest, simplest way for reporting uh, in this day and age is using a cube. It's really a dimensional model that comes with uh, advanced metrics. It comes with KPIs. Uh, so instead of building in those metrics manually within Excel, you actually have them built into a cube and they're really built for speed and performance and for uh, really, it's in plain English. So instead of me having to know what accounts, what tables, what fields, you know, how does that information link together? I just am presented with uh, boxes to click and the initial implementation of Jet Analytics comes with this data warehouse and cube set and it is pre-built for Dynamics. So it could be Business Central, could be GP, 
Um, could be a combination of both, but just know the analytics project is built for turnkey installation. Uh, the initial install is around two to three hours, and then it's really a matter of uh, customization from there. Meaning that if you uh, want to view information differently or you want to change some of the KPIs, we're actually able to deliver on that five times faster than traditional methodology. And the reason for that is uh, this JET data manager. This is actually automating all of the, uh, I call kind of boring stuff, but it's very, very important is the coding. So the coding that usually takes place is moving information, making sure it's accurate, uh, ensuring that only the right people are seeing the right information at the right time. All of that takes place in the background using the JET data manager and the staging databases that are included with the project. And so that's really what makes Jet Analytics so valuable is it's pre-built. It can be modified five times faster. And so what that means for you is immediate return on investment mitigates the risk if you need to make changes and is very flexible for the future as you are looking at potentially moving into a new environment um, or adding or changing the database as you're pulling information from. Um, the data warehouse acts as a centralized reporting system, meaning that even as these things change, my reports and dashboards don't have to. Okay. <clears throat> so the difference between uh, reporting in the just the jet reporting tool and using analytics is really mind blowing. I mean, the first time I saw this, I was very shocked that this was even uh, in the realm of possibility. Uh, basically, I was asked to build a report that showed sales and cost and profit and profit percent, and it was actually needed to be year over year. It needed to include all of my item categories and each individual item SKU with the ability to get down to the transactional level, but also to be sliced and diced by company, by salesperson, by location, and then also to include a graph. And I thought that was going to take forever, right? And so with the analytics tool, it's really not. What we do is we point to one of our cubes. And these are the pre-built cubes that come with uh, Jet Analytics. And then over here on the right, it's actually all pre-built for me. So instead of me calculating discount amount, corporately, we've agreed on what that metric should be. And so we've baked that calculation into the cube to ensure that it's accurate no matter who's viewing it. And so now I'm just clicking boxes so I can grab our sales and our costs. We'll pull in some profit here. Uh, so we see 80 million in profit, but I've just been clicking what are called measures, which are just numbers. And so I need to bring relevance and context to these numbers by adding uh, dimensionality, which can be in our case, item category and date range, right? So I've clicked six boxes and I mean, you have a fully functional sales report. Granted, it's just in pivot table format, um, but it's very similar uh, no matter how you build it. And so I can immediately double click any of these numbers, immediately get taken to the transactional level. Uh, as you can see, we're not waiting for anything to refresh or reload. It's all pre-calculated as often as you want it to be. And then I can actually move this information around. So if I want to view it a different way, um, very flexible, right? Um, and then this is really kind of the beginning of where you could start creating a dashboard. If you wanted to create a dashboard in Excel is we would add in a graph. I would add over here, maybe like a slicer for location. And I mentioned a uh, salesperson, right? And then I could just basically slice and dice on this information. Maybe I just manage a couple of these folks. So you can see everything's tied together and it's lightning fast. I don't have to know how this information interrelates. I don't have to manually calculate profit percent. It's all just baked into the background. And so creating these dashboards is really just a matter of, uh, you know, you have a graph here and then maybe what we want to do is create a dashboard field like this, where all I've done is I've taken individual charts and just did the same thing, clicked a few boxes, created a graph, copy, paste into here, 
and now I have all of these slicers available on all of these graphs. So I can say, again, maybe I manage these four people and I'll look at like a major product line. Um, but as you can see, all of the information is updating uh, for me. And then you can see that's a super glaring trend, but that's the intent is that when you have the visual actually included within the report and it's very, very easy to create, modify and uh, maintain these, it becomes infinitely easier for the average person to come in here and just slice and dice on information and find what they want to know. Um, the last thing I'll touch on, because I, I do hear it a lot with Jet, is uh, how do you compare to Power BI? Uh, Power BI is an amazing tool, by the way, and we absolutely love it. Uh, being a Microsoft partner, we actually saw this product coming a long time ago, which is why we spent so much time really on the foundational piece, which is the data set, uh, making this faster, easier, more flexible, pre-building content around the data warehouse and cubes. Because Power BI, as powerful as it is, as great as it is to connect to any data source, um, one thing that it does limit is someone without a technical background building this on their own. Um, so whenever you open Power BI, it asks where your data is. Uh, it's up to you to manage the relationships between the data. But wouldn't it be nice if you actually had something like this, where you have a sales cube instead of nothing, you have all these calculations over here. So what we're doing is we're pointing to our sales queue. And if I click on this visual, we've clicked three boxes to create this, this visual. And so what we would bring to the table above and beyond what Power BI has is the pre-built data set. If you're looking at Jet Analytics, if you're looking at Jet Reports, we're going to have uh, faster, easier financial reporting within Excel. And then you can use Power BI in combination with the 360 team to create your dashboards that way. So you can combine the two that way. Uh, and then also you have the, um, the ability to add on JET budgets to either product. So if you choose JET reports, you can add JET budgets just to that and then use uh, Power BI uh, on its own. Or you can get everything and actually have the pre-built data set as well as the reporting and budgeting tool. So at the end of the day, it's really a matter of working with your consultants, with your uh, team there at 360 um, and really asking them questions. And like I mentioned earlier, um, if any of this sparks your interest, if it seems relevant, if it's meaningful, if you want to do a deeper dive into any of these subjects or products, uh, just let someone there know and we're more than happy to organize that uh, and make sure that you have a clear understanding of what it could bring to your company. So again, um, thanks uh, uh, for being here. Thanks for having me. Um, and so I did want to leave uh, some time for questions. Um, so I wanted to pass it back over to Barb and or anyone else there from the team and open it up for questions. The mic's open. I had a question. So for these reports, uh, they seem to be more uh, data, like uh, revenue source generating reports. Can you do a report, say, in terms of for inventory quantity purchases by customer instead of revenue generating? Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, I'll, uh, I don't know if you noticed on one of our first slides the um manufacturing distribution and supply chain uh is really our bread and butter so we actually have a lot of reports around inventory uh inventory replacement costs of inventory uh there's even some aging reports around inventory and so on our website those are all available to view and download um i might actually be able to to see those quickly if maybe I click on ops. Yeah, so here's some invo inventory. Yeah, and it's really just a matter is if, it, if that information is being tracked in your system, uh, we're gonna have the ability to access it and create a report off of it. 
Yeah, so a report like that would be off of like the either the item ledger entry yeah. or the purchase. <clears throat> yep, good question. Yeah. Yeah. Notice your your slide had them had all the data coming from SQL databases. Uh, we've got at least one database that uses one of those SQL clones. Okay. Uh, like MySQL or something. Is it still at, would that still work? Yeah. So Jet, uh, we've actually created a what's called a universal connector, um, which really can connect to any data source that's out there. So whether it's a a clone, like you're saying, like MySQL, or it happens to be in the cloud, um, we can really connect to any system that's out there. So how much does all this wonderfulness cost us? <laughs> well, uh, you would want to work with uh, the team there to kind of flush that out. But I'll give you this tidbit is uh, through the end of the year, our pricing is only dependent upon how many data sources you're connecting to. Um, and then how many report designers you would want. And so a designer, they're the ones creating the actual report or framework of the information, and those are named. Um, when we're into 2020, uh, the pricing will change a little bit where it's actually based on user counts. And so uh, I would work with the team there to talk about what products you're looking at and then how many people you would want creating reports. And then we could help uh, create an initial quote for that. Now, Jeff, sorry, this recording, is this still available with GP as well? Or, um, and also is, you know, in terms of the, um, the Business Central, is Jeff only available with Business Central? Or can you still use Management Reporter with, um, just if you were to just upgrading your accounting software, like can you intertwine what you're using with your system for the reporting? To, to some degree, yes. So Jet is available with GP. Um, Management Reporter not doesn't oh. work with business. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. That's everything. Thank you, Michael. Awesome. Yeah, no, thank you. I will, uh, I'm going to go ahead and pause the recording now.